Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today we're going to kick off our fall garden, we're going to tour the summer garden, and we're going to have a demo on starting seeds and trays. Well hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Thank you for waiting so long while I took a little bit of a break from making videos. Well I'm back today with a little bit of a longer video. I'm going to do three things today. First, I'm going to show you what we're going to plant in our fall garden. I'm going to show you my seeds that I've selected. And those are varieties that are designed or, or that do well here in Zone 9A on the Texas coast through the winter. And so our aim is to get those seeds started now so that we can plant them out in early October. And I'll show you what I've chosen. Then we're going to walk around the garden and see what's growing in this super hot weather. So we'll have a little bit of a final summer garden tour. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how to start seeds in a seed tray. If you don't know how to do that already, I'll give you a little demo. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go look at what seeds we're going to grow. Okay, so I'm inside because it's super hot outside, and I want to just knock this part out and show you what I'm going to be growing this fall. Um, I've got a selection of seeds here. I'm going to be growing lots of brassicas and root crops in the fall. Some we're going to start in seed trays, and I'm going to start those today and get them up under the lights so we can sprout those and have our starts for around the first week of October. That's when I like to put my starts out. Um, some of these we're going to direct sow when the temperatures kind of drop off a little bit. And since normally uh, our winter time is, uh, uh, you can garden right through the winter, I'll be, I'll be planting the seeds a little bit later uh, if the seed packet says that they like cooler weather. And so I've got a lot of these Kitazawa seeds, these Asian varieties of uh, Korean radishes. We're going to grow some different varieties of big Korean radishes. We're going to grow a Japanese giant white radish, more of just a novelty. They, they can get um, into the tens and hundreds of pounds. So we're going to grow this Saku, Sakurajima mammoth just as a, as a fun test. We're going to grow some uh, white radishes, some garden cress, Another another couple of radishes, fall storage radishes. Uh, these are daikon types, and daikon radishes really help bust up hard soil. And in my raised beds, as I've been looking at the soil, uh, the further down I go, the more that clay is still. Um, it's not it's not compacted clay, but there's a lot of clay down there, and these will help uh, punch through that. We're going to grow some radishes, some traditional radishes. You can't get away with uh, fall gardening without growing some of these radishes. I'm going to grow the China, China, uh, the China Rose, which is one of my favorites, and the Malaga Radish, and I'm only growing those because I have the seed on hand. I'm going to grow some Amish Snap Peas. I'm going to grow some uh, Turnips. Uh, I'm sorry, Rutabagas. These are from Seeds for Generations, and I've got a lot of their seeds in the mix. We're going to direct sow our carrots this year, and I've got an Atomic Red. I've got a Tender Sweet. I've got a solar yellow, I've got more atomic red, and cosmic purple. We really like the, the different colors of carrots. I'm going to grow some sugar snap peas along with the Amish snap peas. I'm going to grow some mustard greens. I'm going to grow green wave again. This actually grows through the summer quite well, but I'm going to start it in the fall. Uh, it'll have less pest pressure that way. And I'm going to grow this Chinese giant leaf uh, mustard green. Um, Lots of lettuce. I've got a selection of lettuce and most of this lettuce that I'll be growing this year also comes from Seeds for Generations. Um, Seeds for Generations is a wonderful family, visit, uh, family business. Uh, if you want to support my channel, use my link down below and go buy some seeds from Jason and his family over there at Seeds from Generations and we'll get a little bit of a commission. I'm going to grow some broccoli. We're going to start the broccoli and I'm going to start two kinds of cabbage, a heading cabbage. We're going to start that in trays today. Uh, let's see what else we can start in trays. I think everything else will be just fine if we direct seed it. I need to go through my Kitazawa seed. I could probably start all of this in the garden. So, well, that's what we're going to be growing. Uh, there's some mustard, all that. Yeah, all that is direct seed. So we're really only going to start some cabbage and lettuce today. I like to get a head start on that. And uh, yeah, so let's go. Well, let's take a walk around and see the state of the garden in this transitional season at the height of summer. What we've got going on is uh, lots of weeds. The garden doesn't look real good. It's kind of ratty looking. 
uh, but it's producing and it's producing well and I'll show you what we've got. We have our Tabasco peppers here and I've been harvesting them and we'll continue to harvest them all the way until I pull these plants. Uh, it's kind of hard to pull these plants when they're so lovely and producing so well but uh, at some point I need this bed. Peppers, these Tabascos especially, can grow all the way through uh, into the winter but um, yeah, I like my winter garden better than I like Tabasco peppers and so probably in the first week of October when I prep these beds for direct sowing and transplanting, I'll pull those out. Malabar spinach is growing crazy along here and uh, yeah, so the pepper bed is just real beautiful. You can see I've got a lot of peppers, tons and tons of them all over the place and uh, <clears throat> yeah, real nice. There's some eggplant in here. Eggplant's got morning glory vines growing all up in it, but uh, yeah, eggplant, like that big one there, been producing all through the summer. Now these pepper plants here are looking a little sad because uh, it's hot and uh, some, some peppers and chilies grow better than others in the heat. That's what I'm finding. Here is the very weedy bed filled with long beans. This was the tomato bed in the spring and I sowed this cover crop of long beans, some of them while the tomatoes were still here. And you can see they're putting on a heavy crop. I didn't trellis them. I just wanted them to kind of do their thing. And I've been harvesting lots and lots of these beans. And uh, I really enjoy these uh, long beans, these yard long beans. They have many, many names, snake beans, long beans, yard long beans. But uh, yeah, they're really nice. I've enjoyed them. You can see how productive they are and they're very fast. I like to harvest them when they're about this size, if I'm just going to eat them in a stir fry. Uh, you know, about a, I don't know, what is that, a little over an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch, uh, something like this. That's when they're very tender and you can treat these like green beans. You could boil them this way as well. Uh, they're a little tougher than a, a green bean. Once they get about this size, uh, they start getting real gnarly looking and you can see the swelling of the beans inside. Um, they're still good in stir fry, but they don't soften up as much. Um, and you can see where they get their name, but you get a lot of bean for your, uh, for your buck here. So uh, if you're saving seeds, you want to leave them on until the outer, the, the outer membrane starts to get kind of leathery and let them dry and you can save your seeds that way. I don't see any. I've, I've left some out here intentionally to go to seed probably down there. But yeah, these are these are a real good productive bean. You don't have to trellis them, you can just let them run. You can see they, they throw their blossoms up on these stalks where the beans come from, making the beans easy to see above all the foliage. So long beans, real nice crop. All that mess in that gray bucket is sweet potatoes. And all that mess at the end of my third bed there are also my sweet potatoes and they're doing just fine. As they start to uh, start to turn yellow here I should expect to find some tubers down below and you can see they're just barely starting to look like they're reaching the end of their life cycle. They've already blossomed, in fact there's still some blossoms on here, you can see some right there. Once they blossom and start to die off that's when the tubers are usually ready down there. And so I've been uh, waiting eagerly and um, like with all of these beds these need to be done by October, the 1st of October, because that's when this garden will be needed. The okra is growing, putting on more pods than I can keep up with. You can see there's some gigantic ones in there that uh, are too big to eat now. They're nice and woody. But when you get them when they're about three inches long, they're delicious. You can eat them raw. I've been cooking with them, stir fry. Okra is just one of those good foods. Nice tall stalks in there. Phoebe likes to walk down in there. Now here's my cow peas. The cow peas have been marvelous. This is the variety called Holstein and I'll show you when I like to harvest a cow pea. My cow pea crop has been coming in over the course of many days and the pods range from this fresh tender green to these dried brown papery uh, hulls and I like to find them right in between. There is one in here that's right in between. Here's one that's right in between. They start to turn yellow like this. When they're yellow and soft and pliable, I find them a little more easier to shell. Either way, uh, whether they're dry and papery or whether they're uh, nice and yellow or whether they're a little more yellow like this one here, 
more pliable, I find them really easy to, uh, to work with. And these cowpeas are delicious. I've only got a four by four little square right here, and I've got um, at least a cup and a half of, of cowpeas, which once cooked, will plump up. So I'll show you how I shell them and, and what I do with those. Um, this is a wonderful, a wonderful crop. And you can see this crop is, is starting to yellow now. It's produced, it's coming to the end of its life cycle, and we'll have no problem taking these out and planting something else in this space. Well, over here in this corner of my yard, my raised bed here, Hugo culture bed, has sunk down about five inches now. I've got a blackberry, thornless blackberry plant doing well in the center here. Its leaves are a little curled because it needs water. Um, all my pollinator attractors that I planted in here, they're starting to give up the ghost. And these flowers will reseed themselves in here, so I'll probably have to deal with these flowers a lot. Uh, my apple trees are about four feet tall now. Something's been munching on this one and I can't find what it is. Uh, I've been out here searching at night trying to find the caterpillar that has stripped a good foot and a half of leaves here. But never fear, the apple tree is putting out new leaves from, uh, from the buds there. And so my four apple trees are doing well. Uh, they're progressing along the way they should. And you can see I'm walking in the area that was about a foot high, two feet high with uh, grass where my, uh, where my pumpkin pits were. I had some, a melon pit over there. I had some squash growing here, some Seminole squash. I harvested a little bit off of that. The vine borers did get to it and um, some of the vine borers made it into the fruit. So I lost some of my fruit from that. But overall, um, yeah, I got this mowed down now. It looks a little nicer. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to fall. I'm not gonna plant anything right here in the fall, but I do have a new raised bed and I'm debating where I'm gonna place that in my yard here. Well, here is a success story. This is Lucy the lemon tree. And Lucy died back all the way to the ground in our epic freeze, but she's put up new growth from above the graft union. And all this is new growth. Uh, just from this year and that's impressive so what we're going to do is come in in the early in the early spring of this coming year we're going to come in here and find the branches that we want to uh, prune out and we're going to give lucy a nice good open shape because these meyer lemons produce tons of lemons and we, re we really want to have this um, centerpiece of our backyard grow back and if you follow my channel, you may remember that last December, Lucy was about this tall and about twice as wide and was laden down with hundreds of pounds of Meyer lemons. So yeah, doing good. Phoebe, you knocked over a fig. Got to get some water on these trees. Most of these fig trees like this one here and all of these back here most of these fig trees also died back in the winter freeze, but almost all of them came back and I got some fruit off of them. I've got a lemon tree in here in a pot. Uh, this tree is a uh, some sort of a citrus. This is a uh, blood orange, satsuma, not a satsuma, a sanguinelli blood orange. And this tree um, went, underwent some stress because it's in a pot that's too small for it. But it put on new, it lost all its leaves. I mean, a citrus tree is just gonna react against any kind of stress, like this one here, and just drop its leaves. But they quickly put on new leaves and uh, they're pretty hardy. So I need to get these potted up next year. We'll see if we're gonna put any of them in the ground. Phoebe, hey, quit knocking my plants over. What are you doing? You're still after that mouse? Huh? Okay, so I have my Haas Tool seed starting trays right here. And these are 162 cells. That's gonna be more than, a, more than enough plants for my fall garden over there. I'm gonna start my lettuces, my broccoli, and my cabbages in this tray. If I feel up to it today, I'm going to start another tray and I'm going to, I'm going to leave one tray outside and try to stay on top of watering. That way, once they get to be time to plant out, I don't have to harden them off. 
But the other tray, the insurance tray, is the one I'm going to grow under the lights inside my house. And I'll know that I can get those up to um, plant out size. I'll know that everything's well with them because I'll stay on top of watering. And starting indoors under the lights is always the best option. So I'm going to take some of this uh, seed starting mix. Uh, this happens to be miracle Grow brand. Whatever brand you get, make sure it says seed starting, not potting soil, not garden soil, seed starting mix. And basically all that is is very finely ground peat moss. And uh, I like this stuff because, well, I can get it easily. It's cheap. What we want to do is uh, pre-moisten it then. Uh, I'm going to take a bucket right here, dump some of this in there, pre-moisten it, get it nice and uh, where it, it uh, breaks the surface tension of this peat moss, and that, that'll make it take up moisture. And then we'll put it in our tray and plant our seeds. So we'll just dump our seed starting mix in here, which is, like I said, very finely ground peat moss. It's got some perlite added in there, and this brand usually gives you some uh, a little bit of fertilizer. I'm going to put some water in there, more than you think. And now I'm going to take my gloves. All right, well, I busted one glove. We can do it one-handed here. And I'm just going to I'm just going to knead it so that the water gets into all that seed starting mix. Gets it nice and moist. When it sticks together in your hand like that and doesn't have a lot of moisture coming out of it, that's when it's ready. And this one, I could add a little more here. Let me get another bag. Put a little more in there, maybe half a bag. And just work it in with your hands like it's a dough. We're just trying to break that surface tension of the peat moss in there. Once you get it worked in, it'll take up water readily. That ought to do. All right, so it'll stick together in your hand like that in a clump, but there's not a bunch of water falling out, you know, squeezing out like a sponge. That's about where we want it. All right, so I'm just gonna start filling my tray here by working it into the cells and making sure I get a a plug pushed down in there, get, get the soil pushed down in there. What we're doing is forming a, a plug so that when we pop this out with the roots and with the new young plant in there, it'll all come out as one piece, one plug. Now you can put this stuff in dry and then just water it in really well, but I find it takes forever for that watering in process to happen and it's not very thorough and you never know what you're going to get. So I like to pre-moisten my soil, push it in like this. I find it gives a much better plug in the end and keeps your plants a little bit better together. Our lettuce seeds require a quarter of inch, a quarter inch depth to plant in. So what I'm gonna do is just make a little, a tiny depression about a quarter of an inch deep with an end of a pencil. Some of these depressions will go easy, some of them you It'll sink kind of down in there, but just like so, we're making some little holes in our soil to pop in our lettuce. I'm going to do three rows of this red velvet lettuce here. I'm just going to put one or two seeds in each hole if I can. That's kind of hard to do. Three went in there, five went in there, two, two. That's okay, we can thin if we need to. All right, let's see what this is. This is red salad bowl lettuce. I'm gonna put my label at the last row, at the last row, so there's one, two, three rows, and that way where that label is, I know that everything from here to the right is that particular lettuce. All right, what's next? I don't know yet, but let's make some divots. Let's grab some fresh seed starting mix that's not been watered up. And we're going to take it and just sprinkle it on. Now you can do it this way. Just lightly cover those seeds in, on there. And that's the simplest way. Just kind of pat them down. Or you can take your fingers and just mash the hole over the seeds. The problem with that, I find, is that sometimes I don't get those seeds all the way in the hole. 
and you kind of have to manipulate things around like there's some seeds that aren't in the hole well that's all right just kind of shove them in there bury them in you can do either way and then what we're going to do at the end is we're going to water this in really well i've got some brunswick cabbage here this is actually one of the ones i always look forward to growing each year is a nice big green heading cabbage these seeds are to be planted a quarter inch to a half inch deep so about where we have them here and i'm going to try to just get one in each hole because I'm going to plant so many of them that if some don't go come up I'll have plenty to plenty to go from so don't want to have to trim these and uh, cull them and thin them but uh, if I have to I will you know no big deal but I'm trying to make good use of my seeds and get them to go far so I've got quarter inch deep holes here. I'm gonna do three rows of Brunswick cabbage. All right, so our first seeds for fall are now in. And we're gonna just let them sit here overnight and soak in all that moisture. And hopefully they'll start germinating re really, really soon. Nice. Well, hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. You can support our channel by purchasing seeds from Seeds from Generations, but uh, I also encourage you to shop around and get the seeds you want to eat. But Seeds for Generation, good family-owned business, and uh, we get a little commission if you use our link down below. Um, thanks for joining me. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.